Greetings from the Jazz Cloud. I'm Richie Zellen, and I'm happy to share with you another lesson based on a standard that, due to its rich and distinctive harmony, has become a must in every jazz musician's repertoire. As you know, I'm referring to Stella by Starlight, written by Victor Young. And those that keep up with my lessons will recall that a few weeks back I posted a solo fingerstyle version of this piece. In that video I mentioned that I would soon follow it up with an easier chord melody version that you can play in a duet or trio setting. And today I fulfill that promise. But not only will I teach you the arrangement you are about to hear, but I'll explain the harmony and suggested scales to use when improvising. I'm also going to teach you some very modern reharmonization techniques you can use to introduce variation when playing this piece. So if you're ready for some deep learning, and I mean deep learning, stick with me. Here it goes. Welcome back to the Jazz Guitar Channel where I bring you weekly lessons on everything related to the art of playing jazz guitar. And before we start examining Stella, if you would like a PDF of the notation including detailed tab, you can download it from my website at jazzguitar.richiezellen.com forward slash premium. The download also includes a separate PDF with the alternate reharmonizations I'm about to teach you, an MP3 of me playing the arrangement, an MP3 backing track, and a band in a box file for those that have the program. So next, let's examine Stella in four measure segments. You should see a chart of the descending cycle of fifths on the side that you can refer to when I analyze the cadences that make up the progression. For those of you starting out with jazz theory, this should help visualize and reinforce the fact that most jazz standards consist of a succession of chords that start at different points of this cycle. You'll notice that they progress through it for the remainder of a given section. And as most of you know, the 2-5-1 cadence, which makes up a large portion 
of standards is a great example of the cycle of descending fifths in action. So having said that, let's look at the first two measures. Here we have a 2-5, an E minor 7 flat 5, and A7 altered. Normally, if progressing in the cycle, it would resolve to D minor, but it doesn't. And just so you know, two fives that don't resolve are known as half cadences. Before I continue, I want to enclose the two five in parentheses. And we will be doing this for every two five in the piece to easier visualize the harmonic components that make up the piece. This will help you to memorize the piece as well as better construct your lines into phrases that encompass the full 2-5 or 2-5-1. What I want to stress through this practice is that you have to break away from thinking in terms of a bunch of isolated chords. Instead, you need to think in chunks of reoccurring 2-5 patterns that start at different points of the cycle of fifths. Capiche? <laughs> Measures three and four consist of another two fives, so let's enclose it. Before proceeding to show you how this two five resolves, let me play these first four measures slowly. One, two, three. So, in terms of suggested scales to use when improvising over these four measures, E Locrian, A Super Locrian, C Dorian, and F Super Locrian. As I mentioned initially, I want to teach you some alternative reharmonizations for different passages of Stella. And I want to teach you three different ones that you can use over the first four measures. And note that these are not conventional reharmonizations of the melody. They are fairly advanced, so if you are not at least at an intermediate technical level, that is, you might have a somewhat of a hard time with them, but don't worry about it. You'll get there. <laughs> Anyhow, here's the first one. One, two, three. And here's the second one. One, two, three. Two, three, four. Three, four. Two, three, four. And here is the third one. One, two, three. train changes there. Let's proceed with measures 5 through 8. And now I can explain where the F7 altered in measure 4 resolves to. Also let me add that whenever a dominant resolves a perfect fifth down, we place an arrow to denote this action. In this case, the arrow from the F7 is going over the F minor in measure 5 and targeting the B flat 7 on measure 6. Uh, the F minor is an interpolated 2 minor chord simply retarding the resolution from the F7 to the B flat 7. The F minor is preceding the B flat 7 to form a 2 5 and in doing so create additional harmonic motion. So remember that all two minor 7 chords are just helper chords to help enrich the progression. 
In most cases, they are expendable and the dominant they are related to can take up their space. Of course, this is not something desirable in jazz because we want that ad additional uh, color. But always keep in mind that in the same manner that you can complicate matters by preceding any dominant with its relative to minor, when improvising, you can simplify matters and just improvise over the dominant for the entire duration of the 2-5. Continuing, you'll see here that the B-flat 7 is followed by the E-flat major 7, to which it resolves on measure 7. It is in turn followed by an A-flat 7 sharp 11, which is a modal interchange chord borrowed from the parallel minor key. So let me play measures five through eight slowly. One, two, three, four. And notice that here on uh, measure seven and eight, I introduced some rhythm where, as in the uh, original PDF, we just have a uh, whole note for measure seven and then a uh, dotted half note for uh, measure eight. And you might want to do the same whenever you find instances like this to create more rhythmical variety. As far as scales suggested for improv in these four measures, we can use an F Dorian, B flat Mixolydian, E flat Lydian, and A flat Lydian dominant. Measure 9 introduces the tonic for the first time, which is B flat major. Wow! Eight measures before we hear the tonic in this tune. Measure 10 consists of a 2-5 resolving to the 3 minor or D minor 7 on measure 10. If you recall, this is what we were expecting after measures 1 and 2, which also consisted of E minor 7 flat 5 and A7 altered. In measure 12, we have a 2-5 in disguise. E flat 7 sus is really a B flat minor with an E flat in the bass preceding a uh, E flat 7. And note that this is followed by an F major 7 in the upcoming measure, which is measure 13. So what is going on here, you might ask yourself. This is very intricate, harmonically speaking, so pay special attention if you care to understand this. The E flat 7 can be viewed as a substitute dominant of a D minor 7 if we view it as a tritone substitution of A7. However, it is followed by an F major 7 and not a D minor. On the other hand, because F major 7 is over the fifth of B flat, which is the original key, it is easy to assume that we have a temporary modulation to the key of F. That is because we can't have a major 7 chord over the 5th degree of a key without destroying it. So with that in mind, we can deduct that the E flat 7 is acting as a substitute dominant of the D minor 7, which in turn is the relative minor or 6 minor chord in F. But there is no D minor 7 after the uh, E flat 7. <laughs> well, here's the reason. We know that the one major and six minor chords are interchangeable. So the E flat seven works when it is followed by the F major seven and instead creates what is known in harmony as a deceptive resolution. I know it's complicated, but that's jazz harmony for you. So let me go ahead and play measures nine through 12 very slowly. One, two, three, four. If 
you find that this chord here, the E minor 7 flat 5, is too much of a stretch for you, you can just uh, omit the fifth string and play the G minor triad. And the suggested scales for these four measures are B flat Ionian, E Locrian, A super Locrian, D Aeolian, B flat Dorian, and E flat Lydian dominant. Next, I want to teach you an alternative reharmonization for measures 9 through 12. One, two, three, four. So after the initial F major 7 on measure 13, measures 14 through 16 consist of two sets of two fives that form a chain of dominance through the cycle of fifths and finally resolve to a C minor on measure 19. And let me play measures 13 through 16 slowly. One, two, three, four. Suggested scales here are F Ionian, E Locrian, A Super Locrian, A Locrian, and D Super Locrian. Next, I want to teach you an alternative reharmonization for measures 13 through 16. Measures 17 through 20 consist of a G7 altered resolving to a C minor. And this C minor is the clear point of return back to the original key of B flat from the temporary modulation to F that we previously went over. The G7 here is the secondary dominant of the two minor chord in B flat, which happens to be C minor. With that in mind, let's take a step back and I want you to note how right after the F major 7 on measure 13, the root motion of the chords descend through the cycle of fifths until reaching the G7, which finally resolves to the C minor. In essence, what we have here is a chain of dominance consisting of A7, D7, and G7 with two minor 7 interpolated chords. Now let me play measures 17 through 20 slowly, which, by the way, in, the, in Stella's form, <laughs> represent, or better said, introduce the B section. One, two, three, four. Three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. The suggested scales here are G Super Locrian and C Dorian. On measures 21 through 24, we have again only two chords, A flat 7 sharp 11 and the tonic B flat major. The A flat 7, which previously appeared on measure 8, like I pointed out, is a modal interchange chord borrowed from the parallel key of B flat minor. Let me play measures 21 through 24 real slow. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one. Three, four, one, two, three. And the suggested scales here are A flat Lydian dominant and B flat Ionian. And we're ready for measures 25 through 28. And here we begin a sequence of two fives that will eventually resolve back to the tonic on measure 31. So to demonstrate this in a wholesome manner, 
we'll analyze measures 25 through measure 32. Measures 25 and 26 first consist of a 2-5, that is E minor 7 flat 5 and A 7 flat 9, resolving to a D minor 7 flat 5, which is the 2 minor relative of the upcoming G7 flat 9. Again, notice how the root motion flows right through the cycle of descending fifths. Now, what we have on measure 29 is a tritone substitution of G minor 7 and C7, which, like all substitute dominants, resolves down by half step to its target, in this case, an F7 altered, which is preceded by an F7 sus chord. And the F7 sus is just its 2 minor 7 in disguise. And you can think of it as a C minor 7 with F in the bass. So, after this long trek through the cycle of descending fifths, the progression finally comes to a rest back at the tonic on measures 31 and 32. Let me play measures 25 through 32 real slow. One, two, three, four. Suggested scales for these eight measures are E Locrian, A Super Locrian, D Locrian, G Super Locrian, C Sharp Dorian, F Sharp Mixolydian, C Dorian, F Mixolydian, and B Ionian. In the PDF arrangement for download, at the end of measure 30, you have the option to jump to the code in order to end the tune. So next, I'm going to slowly play the uh, coda, which starts on measure 33, all the way to the end. One, two, three, four. So there you have it, Stella by Starlight, chord melody, harmonic analysis, alternative reharmonizations, and suggested scales. As usual, I appreciate your comments and welcome your questions. I'd really like to know how many of you learned something new throughout this lesson. I know this is not a beginner's lesson, and for those of you who are starting out, sorry, I promise. To also post simpler lessons. Also, if this is your first time on the Jazz Guitar Channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to click on the notification bell icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming lessons. So until we meet again, please stay safe. Hasta la vista. Peace be with you.